This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 1 NBT C5. This standard states, given a two-digit number, mentally find 10 more or 10 less than the number without having to count and explain the reasoning used. This implies the necessity of a solid foundation in understanding place value. And back in kindergarten with standard KNBTA1, uh, students were introduced to this. The standard states compose and decompose numbers from 11 to 19 into 10 ones and some further ones. For example, by using objects or drawings and record each composition or decomposition by a drawing or equation such as 18 equals to 10 plus 8. At the same grade level, we have standard 1 NBTB2 that connects to this standard. This standard states, understand, uh, let me do this little piece over. Within the same grade level, we have this other standard, 1 NBTB2. It connects back to standard 1 NBTC5. This additional standard states, understand that the two digits of a two-digit number represent amounts of tens and ones, and understand the following as special cases. So we do have some pieces to this. Part 2A states, 10 can be thought of as a bundle of 10 ones, called the 10. 2B states, the numbers from 11 to 19 are composed of a 10 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 ones. And then the third component here, 2C, states the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 refer to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 tens and zero ones. So there's a big emphasis here on place value. Within this same cluster, we have standard 1 NBTC6 that deals with subtracting multiples of 10 in the range 10 through 90 from multiples of 10 in the range of 10 through 90. But you need to have positive or negative, but you need to have positive or zero differences. And you have to use concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. Standard 1 NBTC5 also lays the foundation for a second grade standard. It connects to 2 NBTB8 that deals with mentally adding 10 or 100 to a given number, 100 through 90, and mentally subtracting 10 or 100 from a given number, 100 through 90. Oops. Bonk. Okay. Say it again. Yeah, I was saying it's 900. <laughs> Hi. Standard 1 NBTC5 lays a foundation for a second grade standard, 2 NBTB8, that states mentally add 10 or 100 to a given number 100 through 900 and mentally subtract 10 or 100 from a given number 100 through 900. The key idea here is that students have to mentally find 10 more or 10 less than a number. No calculators, no pencil and paper. They have to do this uh, mentally. So let's take the number 28. If we go to the right, that would be adding 10 in that direction. If we go to the left, subtract 10. And if we think of this in terms of a number line, this is what we would have. We start with 28, add 10 is 38, subtract 10 it's 18. However, this is first grade. Uh, there are no number line expectations at this grade level. Uh, number lines don't appear in the Common Core until second grade. 
So let's uh, table this for now because, again, this is not an expectation. So what else can we do mentally? Well, let's say we start with 37 and we're going to add 10. Students have worked with uh, manipulatives dealing with 10s and 1s. So if they can visualize that I, uh, here I would have 3 10s and 7 1s. And if I'm adding 10, I would throw in an additional 10. So now I have 4 10s and 7 1s, which would be 47. A key observation here would be that nothing happened with the 1s since I'm adding 0. Let's take 37 again, but this time we'll subtract 10. And again, visualizing our three tens and our seven ones, all we have to do is just take one ten away. So we have two tens and seven ones, which is 27. Again, key observation, nothing happened with the ones. Prior to the expectation of students doing this mentally, well, they need experience actually doing it in writing. Now, when they do these written examples, they'll start seeing the patterns when you're adding and subtracting 10. So, for example, if I, if I start with 10 and add, no, nope. for example, if I start with 24 and I add 10, I get 34. Or when I subtract 10 from 46, I get 36. And they start seeing the pattern that nothing changed with the ones place. The change happened with the tens place. Again, doing additional uh, items, doing additional examples, students get more experience, and this gets more and more founded. By doing additional examples, students you know, start to get this idea really cemented in, in, their, in their minds that, again, when you're subtracting 10 or adding 10, nothing changed with the ones place. It's only the tens place that's getting affected. Now, here's a little bit of a different example. Let's say we start with a number in the teens, like 16. If I subtract 10, in this case, I would get 6. Uh, we typically don't put a zero in front of the six, but it's just a little bit of a difference from the other numbers that they're dealing with. Now, what if you have a number in the 90s? What about something like 93? We know that we're going to get a three-digit solution. There is standard 1NBTA1 in the same grade level, where students are expected to count to 120. Uh, so they are expected to do something, you know, know some things about three-digit numbers. So having them add 10 to a number in the 90s uh, would be an expectation here. So for example here, 93 plus 10 is 103. Uh, it should be a problem that, that the students could handle under this standard. Let's take 53 plus 10, which is 63. What students need to do, especially mentally, they need to start transitioning from this idea of 10 ones, and they need to start seeing that as 110. Again, because I'm just going to redo this. To really be able to do this mentally, students have to transition from seeing this as 10 ones to seeing this as 110. Now that's critical. Uh, it's almost like, okay, we're not even dealing with the ones place. You know, it's just the 10. So mentally, it's almost like the ones place isn't even there. I'm only going to be dealing with the tens place. So I'll take 53, I'm, I'm only concerned with the 5, with the tens place, I'll add 110 to that, uh, which gives me 6 tens. Uh, so again, it's only the tens that we're dealing with. And I'm, I am 
and I am adding 110 to that. With the ones place, nothing happens. You know, there's no change because I'm adding nothing. I'm adding zero ones. So when students see problems like these, where they're adding or subtracting 10, mentally, it's almost like they eliminate the zero. We're only dealing with the tens place. So they do the computation, either add one or subtract one, depending on the context. And then they can vi visualize the zero being there, but again, there's going to be no change with the ones place. So with enough experience, student so with enough experience, students should be able to start with a number, say, like 53, add 10 and get 63, and keep going. Add another 10, that's 73. And then 73 plus 10 would be 83. Of course, the expectation would be that they should be able to take 10 less than a number also. So if I started with 53 and I wanted 10 less, that'd be 43. Subtract 10 from that, 33. Subtract 10 from that, 23. Again, the key is simply to have a lot of practice, uh, but focus on the idea of place value. That's the key. If we look at our standards of mathematical practice, if we look at the first four, uh, we did apply two, three, and four. Students would reason abstractly and quantitatively uh, doing the activities in this standard. They would construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others, and they would model with mathematics. If we look at the last four standards for mathematical practice, students, uh, by doing this standard, would need to attend to precision. They would look for and make use of structure. And they would also look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Danny.